I started this thing. Uh, it's live. What, what, what do you mean? Like, I know. I said, well, when we started this thing, uh, I remember that it was still sunny out. That's right. right. When you got here, it Much was, earlier. It was noon. No, what, was it that, was it it that was, early when we started? It was a little after 8 when you got here. No, 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 no. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. Oh, I mean, like. start at 6. Well, when it we. Was, it was. It was April. Yeah. And so it has, has daylight savings time? Has it, oh, has it changed? Sunday. It's, it's, Sunday. it's Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't really last for that long anymore. It used to last for a long, didn't it used to last for longer? Or was I just younger? I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember. I, I don't, this whole last year has been pretty much a blur. And it doesn't matter if it's uh, been day or night or what day it is. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, daylight savings yeah, time. It, we're, don't forget to set your... You know, they don't have daylight savings time in Iraq. They don't want to have to set all the time bombs back one hour. Uh, was that like from 1993? <laughs> it's, a good, it's, it's a good joke, I think. No, it's not. No, it's, it's not very funny. <laughs> no, uh, you, have, you have to work on that one. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, no, it's, uh, so it's been about a year of COVID. Yes, exactly a year. Rem it, was, it was yesterday. Yesterday was the first lockdown. The no, it wasn't. It was like a week from today, isn't it? No, no. Yesterday, the 11th was the first was lockdown like, of COVID. I th I, yeah, I know it was like between the 10th and the 20th. Um, but remember, we were thinking like, uh, and rumors were going around, what, we have to do this for two weeks? Right, Are two you, weeks. two whole weeks? What are we going to do? Later. I can't go, I can't go get my nails done. Yeah, that's right. You know, like, go to the gym for two weeks. Now oh half of them are out God. of business. <laughs> <laughs> Remember in those first, actually those first, that first weekend even, everyone obeyed and stayed home. No one went out. Every, every restaurant was, was closed. Fabulous. Every store was closed. And we walked down the street and it was in what's usually a crowded West Hollywood Street Street with 10,000, 20,000 people. It was you and I, and not just homeless people, but the craziest of homeless people, because the sane homeless people had found shelter someplace. So right. it was you, so, and, so, and we so, went halfway down the street, and we said, this is too scary, let's get out of here. Mm. A place that usually has 10,000 people. So, so here's, a, yeah, yeah. Here's, the th here's the thing to point out, is that we never broke our, our Friday night cycles. That's right. We never didn't go, go out uh, somewhere, walk yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, we usually like, we the, don't know, but after street. this, we usually like, well, yeah. I might go to the bank or I'll run errands. The supermarkets. Supermarkets, yeah. basically. And, that, and then we call it a night. And that's basically what we've been doing for, for a decade now or whatever. Yeah. And <laughs> it, is, it is a decade. <laughs> this, is, this is middle aged Friday nights. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. You know, some people play board games. We never games. go in we anywhere. Do. We never went in a bar. No, no, we no. I've got no interest. just walked down the street, yeah. went to the bank, went to the supermarket. That's it. And there's, there's and then go. The, the, and then the occasionally market. you see some kind of craziness go yeah. on. You know, like, like I don't know, so, some some drunk fight or yeah. or somebody dressed up in a very crazy way or just, just something wild. Going yeah. on. But, you know, it's entertainment. It's, it's like and, a zoo. And know? then one night a year ago, tumbleweeds. And remember, all the, the lights of the restaurants and the bars were on, mm -hmm. all their, their signs, yeah. everything was lit up, and a place where we usually see tens of thousands of people, zero people. It was you and I. It was very Twilight Zone, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, like where like is the, everybody? The nuclear, the nuclear blast that left the buildings standing. Remember right. Yeah. Uh, and, well, it, it really started... The first I heard about it was I went to CES in 2020 in January, which is the yeah. Consumer Electronics Expo. And a lot of the people coming from China. And at that time, a lot of them just didn't come. And there were some empty stalls. Oh. Because they didn't get on planes to come over. Because, and, and at that point, it was like, oh, another sort of virus in China. SARS or... Yeah, yeah. yeah like one of those things. Ebola. And, yeah. No, e Ebola is Africa. Oh. But uh, MERS, so, so a bird flu, all those things like that. And so I, it, the idea of it becoming this very large thing didn't really occur to me. All I knew is that, this, oh, attendance is down from China this year because of that. Because, you know, they're having another issue over there. Um, and then the next sort of conference I went to hmm. was one in Pasadena in early March. And 
we were amazed. I was amazed that they hadn't canceled it because around that time things were getting canceled. Yeah. And things weren't only getting canceled for March, but things were getting canceled for June. That's right. Can you believe they canceled it? Canceled Gay Pride, and then they canceled Halloween. So no, Halloween. By the end of March, they said there's no Halloween festival. Right. And and you're like, yeah. really? Now I don't know if there's going to be one this year. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it was. It's not a, It's kind yeah. of a waste of time anyway. Um, but, <laughs> but Unless the, it rains. Those are great. <laughs> Remember that one where it So rains? funny. So funny. So we were out there, and there were 100,000 people in the West Hollywood uh, um, Halloween Festival. It's a religious holiday here. Oh, but, but, people and, plan and, their year around. And, 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 and not only that, but, 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 but when you're dealing with, the, with this kind of crowd... Yeah. Everybody has the same costume. It's sluts with glitter. Yeah. And, so, and so you're out there, and people, you're like, I'm an Easter bunny. And all it is is it's like a, a G-string and, and like a little... And ears. And, and ears. And a bunny tail, yeah. And, and that's it. But there's also glitter. You're there's right. some glitter. Let's say have glitter. I don't know right? why bunnies have glitter. And so exactly, it was really exactly at midnight. midnight. The skies open up twice a year here it rains, but when it rains... It's buckets, mm -hmm. and suddenly the street is a foot deep with water, <laughs> and all the glitters running off, and you can see these bunny tails going down the <laughs> in the thing. And we were in regular clothes, but we were soaking wet, and we were running home. And then we finally said, "What are we running for? We're already everybody is already there were four of us. We were already soaked completely through your underwear, your shoes, mm -hmm. and everything. Why run now?" What are, what are we doing? But 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 it was like it was like if if some if like um, Ben Shapiro decided to make a homophobic you yeah. know depiction of West Hollywood that's and then the rain was, comes down right. that's what it looked like that's what it was and people's costumes floating <laughs> you know uh, uh, like bikinis and scarves and and then within a half hour it's it done it was yeah, done it exactly. was over <laughs> yeah the the, the 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 gods were angry but they don't but they don't hold grudges that's right. <laughs> but uh, but so the second second um, conference I went to was in Pasadena in early March. It was a computer conference, and by then attendance was way down. Like in the expo, yeah. um, where all the booths are usually up, yeah. you know, maybe a third of them yeah. were had shown up, yeah. um, and some speakers hadn't come. And you know, because by, by then it was you would. Uh, uh, all of the grocery stores were empty. And yes. I don't just... That's right. I, oh, I, we I, went I out to grocery stores. I don't store. mean the toilet paper craze. Yeah, yeah that was real. Uh, but I mean, like, you go to the frozen food aisle, and there's nothing. Remember, they wouldn't let us in the store. It was the first <gasps> right. or second night, and we could see through the glass, and everything was picked. The, every piece of vegetable, the tables were empty, where they put out, like, the peppers and oranges. There wasn't a piece of food left in the soup. And, and so we said, oh, but, but I bet you, yeah. because this thing, they have a, a parking above, yeah. and nobody uses it at night. So I was like, oh, I bet you that we could go in from the, from the upstairs and, and come right. in an elevator. So we did that. And then there were like secure, there were extra security guards they there, and they <laughs> shoot us out like we were common thieves. Like, hey, you, get out of here. Well, there's nothing, there was nothing left to buy in and the I, entire store. We just like wanted it was to see a nuclear it. holocaust. I know. And all the water was gone, which was strange because Did the, tap the water work? was never in danger. We were going to have water. I, I know. don't know what that was. But every piece of fruit, there wasn't a lettuce leaf left in the store. And like, uh, yeah. and, and people were buying, you know, uh, more rice in China. It was insane. <laughs> and like, my brother did that with something. It was uh, some kind of cold case. He said, "I don't know what this is, but maybe I should get some." <laughs> I I don't know what that is. <laughs> and, and and then and then what happened is that uh, the the people went into like a production overdrive. Yeah. And then about a month and a half later, there were like piles of beans on the discount right. racks. Right. <laughs> there was stuff that. That the things that had there been a nuclear holocaust, you would have wanted. Mm -hmm. But by that point, people realized, oh, a bomb hasn't exploded; it's just disease. So there were beans and toilet paper, and remember all the water? They had the mm -hmm. water piled in the aisles because no one was buying it. Like, like the crops are still growing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the water is still that you can still turn on the. You can still turn on the faucet and uh, water comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I I remember there was a um, there was an Instagram post mm -hmm. of um, 
from Paula P Poundstone. Yeah. She had a picture of her dog. And it looked like that there's a, there was a roll of toilet paper behind her, yeah. uh, behind the dog. And I pointed out and said, oh, you think you're so fancy there with like a, and she actually, yeah. that was the only time she actually responded to me. She said, no, 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 it's, it's, it's a dog toy. Oh, wow. Like, like <laughs> she was afraid that somebody would be like, oh. You thought she's hoarding toilet paper. She just, she just had rolls around. Because, because there was a time period when like, you, this lasts for months. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was I was like just uh, I, I went to the hardware store and then I just or Staples and I got reams of like printer paper. You have to no. Buy stuff at CVS so you get the twenty yards of. No, p people are buying bidets. I uh, right, I know people that they got those. Yeah. Now, but I don't understand how much toilet paper people are using. I think I use the regular amount. For, well, for th person. this is the difference. And is that is that is that what, one thing I found yeah. is that with toilet paper consumption. It's wild. Yeah. Some people, you're like, do you dress up as a mummy every time <laughs> go in there? Like, like, I don't understand how people could go through it. Because one roll of toilet paper lasts me I, an amount of time that I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I, a week or two, maybe three, I don't know, a long time. But other people, one day. I, I don't know what's going on because I, right before that, coincidentally, I had been in Smart and Final and, you know, I, I don't know how it's it's like Costco. You buy big stuff, and I don't know if it was sixteen rolls or twenty rolls uh -huh. or something, but it wasn't a hundred rolls. Right. And I bought that right before then, and I don't think I bought. I think that lasts me might not be a year, but it's months and months. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe, have, maybe people have, to have a separate room for toilet paper. Maybe people like wrap it around their hand like like the Jewish fuzzy hats, yeah, yeah. and it's like this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. don't know I haven't mean. figured it out. I consider myself pretty clean, but that 16, or maybe it's 20 rolls, lasted me, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure I've gotten any <laughs> I, Yeah, I think, I think they do other things. Yeah. Uh, I, maybe we're using it wrong. Yeah, that's right, maybe we're using it wrong. <laughs> maybe we don't know what I'm we're doing it with it. To wipe. Yeah. <laughs> but it's apparently... <laughs> and, and, and in fact, it, it, the one thing you haven't done is that, is that if you turn it on the back, there's actually a long instruction manual that none of us have ever read. It's just like, it's just like when you buy the Q-tips, you do not put this in your ear. And we just ignore it and we just... Whoop, whoop, whoop. What else are you doing with your destroy? What else are you doing? Wipe yourself with this toilet paper. Do you know, do not use in the shower. Maybe it's got all kinds of rules about that. When I was in uh, college... Yeah. Um, uh, you, you, if you had to buy, I mean, I guess you could steal napkins from the cafeteria, mm -hmm. but you had to buy nap. You know, if you, you had a this was the college. Uh, University of Alexandria, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> Constantinople. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, you you your own paper, but for some reason, toilet paper was free. They would give out. There was a room in in all of NYU. Everybody had their own, or every room had its own bathroom. Okay. So so that the roommates wouldn't fight. I guess fight about who's who's uh, buying the toilet so, paper. So every individual had their own bathroom? Every room had its own bathroom. So oh, when they had one, two, or three, oh. I don't think there were any fours. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's, but uh, yet a bathroom. Yeah, I've, it's, some of them have hybrid systems. Yeah, yeah that's true. So, um, uh, so they give out the toilet paper. You go to the front desk of the, the, the dormitory and you get toilet paper. So oh, my God, have you seen, some of, the, have you seen some of the dorms at USC? No, no, I no, no. Some of them, they look like luxury that's why that's why you have to pay someone five hundred thousand dollars to get like your they have a in. living room a bedroom a kitchen like no, it's a it's a that. full one bedroom we had, apartment we had a room and then there was a bathroom i've i've, I've been in one of the yeah. marble countertops and i was like no, we you're a kid this is your we college had, dorm we had cinder blocks building the rooms so they give out the toilet paper for free so the students would would learn to use toilet paper for everything so if there were napkins, you'd use, oh, you get a roll of toilet paper. If you needed, uh, you know, you wipe up the floor, toilet paper, cleaning, dusting, it's toilet paper, toilet paper, toilet paper. And even after some people that finally got their own apartments, mm -hmm. were still using toilet paper like that. So you go to friends in the apartments and like on the, the kitchen table, there'd be a roll of toilet paper. And you go, ah, here's someone that went to NYU because they still haven't gotten out of using toilet paper as napkins. Ah. That's how you can tell. It, it, it's, it's like it's like uh, my grandmother still shopped, uh, you know, using food rations like her, or like the numbers, like no, like like the math was still going on in her head, even though she didn't realize it. And she was like buying less cheese and more cottage cheese and like all the substitute items. And, and then she was like, 
Uh, no, saving, no. I, saving kitchen fat and yeah, aluminum foil yeah, from the war I, effort. I don't know. I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good citizen. No, um, when you were talking about that, I, I read some article this, this uh, I posted a lot of good ones this week, but there's this one, um, oh God, I can't find it. It's too much. Continue and, and I'll find it. So, so what else went, went down? What else happened this week, Well, Well, no, I, I asked you to plan for this week's show. What no, was your... no, this week was yours. No, the I told you. The last two were me. Oh, because uh, last week we went down a very bad road of uh, civil war. Right, I right, right. And I, and I told it to you at the end of the episode that oh, you I had this week. I didn't realize this was mine. <laughs> well, then I'd like to continue talking about toilet paper. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But, but, but here's, the, here's, here's what it is. So, so I was uh, doing some research, or I was listening to some, something about the uh, 19... Uh, yeah, the, no, 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 that, that, that's, um, that's the failed French fascist coup of 1934, that's not what I'm talking about, but the Spanish one, the one that actually succeeded, this is in, where the heck is it? Are you familiar with the Spanish Civil War at all? Uh, yes. Okay, so, here it is. So, Spanish Civil War, very complicated, because, um, there were, a number of groups that were all fighting against each other and none of them liked each other. It's, yeah. not, it's not like the American Civil War where it was like, oh. Brother against brother. Well, well no, it's like there's this line yeah. and the people up here and the people down, you know, and, and, and like it's, it's I, I, I just, from last week, mm. we can maybe argue about how complicated the nuances are, but, you know, it's two sides and you know what's going on, yeah. right? Okay. But with the Spanish Civil War, it's a complete mess. N not only, but, um, the other powers got involved super early. Mm. So uh, Fr Franco, who was the most fascist of them, whether he was a true fascist or not, it doesn't really matter, but he was the closest to the fascist at the yeah. time. He was being supplied with, by Germany in Italy at the time. Mm. And, this was, and then you had uh, the Social Democrats, which these days are kind of like the neoliberals, mm. Um, kind of like the, the Clinton, the Bill Clinton style yeah. Democrats, and they they had a, they had a side and they were trying to do stuff. But then you also had the communists that were being supplied by the Soviets at the time. But then you also had the, the, the socialists who don't like the communists, and then you had the anarchists who don't like any of them. And the anarchists, you had uh, different factions of the anar anarchy. You, you had the people who wanted to have a. Free Catalonia, who they still do today. Yeah. Then you have people that went to the Free Basque Country and all these other parts over here. And so you had different independence movements going on. All this stuff was going on at once, right? So it was a yeah. complete mess. And the, uh, if you looked at the time, in the early times, people were saying, well, you know, by 1938, Spain's going to be like five different countries. And like that was not unreasonable to, to you know, they're drawing maps. Like, here's what it's going to look like. It's going to, in the Iberia Peninsula, it's just going to fra fragment into a bunch of things. And people are still talking about today, how they think they're how Spain's going to basically spin, split into threes, they're thinking. But anyway, very complicated. Um, this was the best thing I read about it, though, is that um, they were talking about how there was a, a brand new university, a city campus. Hmm. And at this, at this point, they were trying to fight off the fascists. Yeah. And so they fought off the fascists from the campus itself. And some of these quotes are just choice. They built barricades out of thick tomes of early 19th century German philosophy and Indian mesophysics. <laughs> so basically, they, they had like blockades of books. Book. <laughs> you, know, you know, and then they were shooting over the, over the books. And he said, enemy bullets gave up before reaching page 350, <laughs> making them believe old tales of soldiers saved by the Bibles in breast pockets. And so basically, like, they were fighting off fascist with the books. These, these library books will stop those fascist bullets, yeah. is what they said. And it did? And yeah, and it's just, um, I, I, I just, and then there's all these stories about how they were like, they, 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 uh, the city was collapsing. And then the campus was the only thing they had left. And they, they basically fought off the, the fascists from taking over the small town yeah. by, by fortifying the campus with like books and beakers and, <laughs> and like the chemistry students would like make IEDs and yeah. stuff like that, all the chemicals. And so it was insane, just absolutely insane. Yeah. Spanish Civil War. It's, it's nuts. Um, yeah. And in the middle of it, a siesta. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's um, uh, and, and of course you had um, uh, the uh, George Orwell was there. Oh, I, I didn't know. That. You didn't know that? No. George Orwell went there as a um, again. A journalist. No. Uh, oh. As a troop. Oh. He threw grenades. Oh, I didn't know that. In 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 um, homage to, uh, to Catalonia, he has a a long sort of passage on the grenades that he prefers the best and why he likes them and how to throw them right. And, you know, like, yeah. no, he was a bomb throwing anarchist. You know, he was very, very anti, um, he was anti-totalitarianism, but he, but he saw that in um, not only Stalinistic sort of communist regimes, but also in the corporatocracies yeah. that we have in the U.S. or the fascist regimes of Italy and, and you know, all of those, all of those systems in Jim Crow South, like, like, you know, he saw all of them as just these kinds of methods of control that, that stomp on the freedom, you know, and that's the, that's the true message of Animal Farm in 1984 and stuff. And people like to, the, the, the confusing thing about George Orwell is that people want to sort of or in a lot of these authors, uh, and artists in general, is that they want to sort of, uh, sort of funnel them in and say, oh, he was a conservative in the way that we understand the word, or he was a liberal in the way that we understand, as opposed to saying, like, no, he was a weirdo. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like he, he had very sort of strange and radical beliefs that, that are much, much closer to, you know, um, uh, the, just the true anarchists of the era, like, like the people that did like the Paris Commune of 1871. Um, a lot of artists are like that, yeah. you, you know. Once once you get into them, like they're they're just they're, they're not they're not normal. <laughs> That's why they're artists, right? Yeah. They, they they feel like they don't fit in. They have to express themselves somehow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they're just strange. Um, so what what was Orwell's? He wasn't even Spanish. He was he's British. He was he just thought, oh, I'm going to go there and fight this. Oh, lot of people did. Yeah. Uh, there, there were a bunch of um, Americans that formed a militias in the United States in order to then get on boats and go over and fight uh, with whatever side of the Spanish War they agreed upon. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there were a bunch of people went over to Spain in order to volunteer to fight. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then these, but but the, the, the anarchist troops were very interesting because um, they didn't have a hierarchy of command. And so they did things based on consensus. Yeah. And so it wasn't like this guy tells you what to do. Like they would vote <laughs> on how to do things. And um, most sort of conventional analysis says, well, well that, that's why they lost, right? But um, the, the alternative says, thing says, no, it, it wasn't that. It's because the fascists had German guns and yeah. German guns were the best guns at the time. And they had a lot of them. And they had air support, yeah. right? They actually had planes, whereas the anarchists didn't. Yeah. So uh, the, the first sort of uh, bombing raids that were ever done uh, wasn't in World War II. It was in uh, the Spanish Civil War. Yeah. Th th that's basically where aerial bombing well, campaigns started. World War no. I had... had uh, no. World War I had the flying aces. They did, but that yeah. wasn't bombing. That wasn't bombing? What were they doing? Shooting down, oh, sh shooting trying, down other planes. Oh, they were shooting guns, yes. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're, they're shooting down things yeah. on the ground, yeah. shooting down other planes, right. and, they, and then they're, they're also doing aerial reconnaissance yeah. missions because you wanted to find out what the layout of the troops were and things like that. Yeah. You, know, you wanted to do observations, you know, uh, right. what, whatever it is. Like, bombs. Like, right. you know, because you don't know whether there's 500 people or 5,000 people yeah. heading for you, and that matters a whole bunch yeah. how you were supposed to respond it, how many tanks do they have right all of those things right there's actually a lot of interesting stories with the tanks um are you familiar with the with the german tank problem this is going to be a world war ii episode it's nice um <laughs> german tank problem so uh the germans uh being very organized they gave serial numbers to all of their tanks yeah so um they uh the british people captured them and then they said, because they were trying to estimate how many tanks the Germans had, right? And of course, the, the, the Germans being propagated, well, everybody's lying in a yeah, war. It's yeah. not just the Germans, every side is. You know, like, they'll say, we have a million tanks, right? Or whatever, like our tanks are made out of gold or you know, whatever they're going to say, right? It doesn't matter. Um, so how are we going to get the real numbers? They gave them 
sequential serial numbers. This is tank number one, number two, number three, number four. So when they're able to capture them, they could say, ah, 84. At least 84. That means it's an 83, yeah. like, right? And so um, what they basically did is that they said, we're going to uh, assume that we get a standard distribution. What, what, what do I mean by that? Since we're, we're saying that we, we, are, we are getting these things randomly, mm. right? And so, if we, so instead of saying that um, uh, uh, we're going to assume that it's, like, it's kind of a bell curve, if you will. Yeah. And so then um, we have the shape right here, and then we can use it in order to figure out mm. what the higher end estimation is for how many tanks they had. So they were able to capture a few of these around, and then they were able to do uh, uh, you know, a full sort of statistical mm. mapping of how many they thought they would have based on how many, how many lower numbers they didn't have or how many upper numbers they didn't have. And then they made estimations. And then afterwards, they had all the paperwork and they were right. They were off by like maybe one or two. It was, yeah. it's, was, it was insane great. how accurate they were. Yeah. It was really good math. And um, initially, they didn't do that. But it was, you know, the, the, the Birch did a very smart thing of basically, you know, hiring all of the best minds and saying, you're going to work for war right now. You don't have any choice, yeah. right? Um, you know, and it was one of the mathematicians that came forward and said that, right? So, yeah, um, uh, let's see, another thing I found out today was, um, do you know what Einstein's role was in the Manhattan Project? Uh, no, not specifically. Uh-huh. Well, somebody mentioned that today, mm. and I realized I didn't know anything about it. Mm. So, he wasn't allowed to be on the Manhattan Project. Why not? Because, uh, he had too many pacifist and leftist sympathies. <laughs> so he was denied the clearance. Not only, mm. but he was, uh, all of the people on the Manhattan Project were forbidden from talking to him about it. Oh. Because they were afraid that he would sway their sentiments yeah. against the, the further development of, of, of the bomb. Warfare. Yeah. But, but the interesting thing about it is the reason that they started it was because of a letter that he signed. Mm. He didn't write it, but basically in 1939, um, uh, the, the guy that had uh, basically had the first stable fission reactor in Chicago um, had uh, written, written this letter, and he was a friend of Einstein and whatever. And he said, you know, um, you've got a bit, much bigger name than I have. His name was like Leo, I forget what the last name is. That, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't really matter. He was a um, Hungarian guy. Um, and Essentially, his argument was that um, there is a pos there's potential to make a terrible bomb from nuclear fission, and um, the Nazis could pos potentially be working on this. So, as a matter of defense, we should make sure that we have a response. Yeah. Right. It, it was it was a really early argument for mutual assured destruction. Right. Um, and so using that as, is a two-page document you can read online. It's a, it's a famous letter. Uh, and the guy Leo's name doesn't appear on it. It just says Albert Einstein, mm. right? But it didn't initially Someone write it. Someone else wrote it. Um, by 1946, he already had um, regrets. Mm. Because he said, oh, if I had known how far behind or that the Nazis wouldn't have been successful and never would have written that stinking letter. Like, you know, he was a, he was a radical sort of pacifist, yeah. right? Um, and, uh, yeah, and so he, you know, for, for the next couple of years, he was sort of like their, their very first anti-nuclear mm -hmm. advocate. But, but it's interesting because this is a conversation um, that I, I go in right-wing gab sometimes just because it's so, because it's so curious. But th this guy pointed it out, and I'm sure he was anti-Semitic when he pointed it out. <laughs> but um, then, was, then I realized, I don't really know too much about this history. Mm. So I looked into it, and, you know, he denounces his work on, on, on uh, nuclear weapons and blah, blah, blah. But the funniest thing is that 1946 in his speech, what he advocates for instead is a new world order and, like, a global government. Mm which is like conspiracy red flags. <laughs> and so I'm like, 
okay, well, here's what he said, but I'm sure that, like, you're going to, like, just flip out even more when you see this. <laughs> you know, he was, he was advocating for, like, the United Nations, right? Yeah, but like that's what he was saying was the United Nations. But right, but across, like... Uh, it was in 1946, the United Nations didn't yeah. exist yet. Yeah. They, they had, we're chartered in 47, and so he was using... It's like when you read um, the, uh, the, uh, the guy that almost became our first socialist president after... Uh, FDR, what's his name? Fuck, oh, what's his name? Um, he, he, he was the one that was snuffed out of the 19, uh, becoming vice president in 1940. Yeah, uh, Henry, uh, Henry Wallace. Wallace. And so Henry Wallace in like 1946 or so, yeah. ba- basically he was saying so- something like, well, you know, um, yeah, you guys have this thing, but you know, the, the Soviets are going to eventually come up with it. And then uh, there's going to be like some kind of perhaps a, 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 a threat between the two of you that could potentially lead to war and you're going to then, you know, try to create more than you'll ever be able to use. And, and you know, and he's basically talking about a Cold War or brinksmanship or anything like that, but he doesn't have, but the terminology isn't there yeah. yet. So, he's, so he doesn't have the words, he just has the descriptions of it. And so it's fascinating to read it because, um, like, everything that he says right there and, and the funniest thing is that what, what his conclusion was is saying, like, what we should do instead is just show them how it's built. Yeah. And, like, nobody's going to use it because it's so, da- so, so devastating. Mm-hmm. But, like, at least we're not going to have some animosity between us. And then if, if we, like, sort of put it out there and say, this is how it's done, uh, let's make sure we don't do this because it's awful. And at that point in 1946, everybody was agreeing World War II was terrible and we should not be doing it again. Right, like that. That's what it was all. That's what all of the uh, United Nations was about. Yeah. Right, and and you look at um, like even the most sort of right winger kind of thing, they were still advocating for like you know a world of peace, you know, and in this kind of global cooperation. Right, because everybody was so damn yeah. sick of of war at the time. They're not, not too like, pretty close together. Not only that, yeah, yeah but you know, World War One was just so devastating, so mm. terrible. Right. Um, do, do you know about the Christmas truce in World War One? Yes, that I knew about. That's fascinating. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, uh, I'd like to make an alternative history about that. And, mm-hmm. and there's a, so, so for people who don't know, the Christmas truce was uh, 1914, the war had just begun, and um, it, not much fighting was able to be done because um, trench warfare is terrible. Yeah. There's diseases, it's cold, um, the rain would come, and you know you might you're worried about not drowning or or you know dying from hypothermia Freezing or death, freeze. sure. just 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 awful, right? And so um, then Christmas came around, and of course they were still fighting, still war, right? But it, it, you know people were singing carols and they would hear stuff like that, and then as opposed to throwing uh, uh, grenades, they were like throwing chocolates. Mm. Right? And, and candies and stuff like that. And so the, the British were like throwing the, the, the German chocolates over there. And, yeah. and um, it, they end up exchanging gifts and like playing soccer and doing all these like, and like not fighting. For 24 hours or so? No, for, for it, until, how long did it last? until they were rotated out. Oh. And so the war was called off until they were replaced. <laughs> because they're like, we're done with this war. We're not going to do this anymore. Yeah. Right? Um, and there, the interesting part about that is that uh, the, the, you look at the, uh, the correspondence at the time, and they said, this is why uh, I, I have no regrets over jailing and imprisoning the labor activists and the pacifists. Mm. Because there was arguments during the draft that they should be sending over the, the, the unionists yeah. to fight with them, the, the peace activists, all the labor. Could you, and, and, and like if they were on the lines, then there wouldn't have been a war. They, yeah. Like, you know, the, the, the people who know how to organize people, yeah. you know, and the people who were like, you know, vibrantly anti-war, and you put them along with that Christmas truce, and like they'd say, oh, and not only that, but we're going to turn the guns on our officers tonight. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's, like, that's always a problem. <laughs> you know, we're all going to mutiny. And it was, um, it was like this last-minute decision that they will not be going to war. We are just going to imprison them instead, right? Um, and that's what they did in World War II, right? Yeah. The, the, the uh, fascinating thing that happened after World War II, though, is that um, it, 
it's true that it didn't make the war stop, although World War II was, is, is a much cleaner, uh, has much cleaner objectives than World War I, right? Yeah. Or, whereas if I said, now, what's World War I about? Um, everybody's like, oh, yeah. Fran Franz Ferdinand, I guess? I, got, I, I, I mean, like, assassinated. Yeah. I mean, you know, what, what, like, who, I don't know, the Germans are against, uh, I, like, yeah. like, you know, it's, it's, it's far more confusing. Um, and I say, like, well, what ended World War I? And they're like, uh, I don't know. Everyone was dead, practically. Spanish flu, maybe? Yeah. Like, 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 like uh, you know, and, and then, you know, I, there, there's, there's an argument. Like, I, I can explain it for you, but the whole point is that people generally don't know. And so, like, you know, okay, wh when, did, uh, when did the Americans join World War I? Like, yeah. near the end, actually. Big, right, 1917. Yeah, yeah, right near the end. Um, well, you know, because Wilson ran on that platform if he kept us out of the war. <laughs> <laughs> it's like FDR did in 1940. Um, mm. They always find a way to get in. Um, so, the, uh, um, oh, so what happened with the, um, so yeah, so we had two concentration camps and we didn't gas people like, uh, like the Germans did. It's not that I know of. Um, and we, we imprisoned Japanese and uh, peace activists. But at, what you basically did is that you gave them, uh, you gave the peace activists like a four year retreat. Mm. Because it was like, they weren't actually making a lot of war supplies. They were doing like forest cleanup. Like they were like off in the woods, yeah. right? And then you're like, oh, um, I'm going to get like all of these notable authors and scholars and peace activists and all these people. Now all you are going to live together, mm. right? And so, so th that's why... It became like, a commune. Yeah, that's why after the war ended, mm. you, you know, the, that's when San Francisco sort of um, uh, uh, peace movement started. That's when the anti-war... All of these sort of... Um, uh, you know, we were talking about City Lights Bookstore. With, yeah. with, 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 you know, it, that, that's where all those uh, beat poets end up uh, meeting each other because they were all in a... Uh, in a, in, a, in, a, in a peaceful concentration camp, right? That's how Pacifica Radio started. And, and uh, one magazine, you know, yeah. the, the, the LGBT sort of uh, magazines that, 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 that picked up in the 50s. So, you know, the, the 60s came out of um, the organization that was done by concentrating all of the people in World War II. <laughs> it's a long, it's a long arm of history, right? <laughs> and so, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether um, the lessons of World War One really applied there. Yeah. Maybe if they sent them off to get bombed in or right, yeah. die, you know, die in in, 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 in Iwo Jima, least, yeah. you know, that that wouldn't have <laughs> wouldn't have gotten to their uh, long ends. Uh, oh, tank problem. So by uh, the Korean War, um, they were knowledgeable of the, um, because it had been published after the war. Uh, they said, oh, look at this brilliant technique that we came up with. And that, you know, we were able to look at the serial numbers on these tanks and then figure out how many they had. Yeah. So the Koreans skipped numbers <laughs> intentionally yeah. in order to make it, because they said, oh, they're going to use this technique. Mm -hmm. So it's going to make it look like we have a much right. bigger fleet than we actually have. So yeah. So um, did it work? Yeah. 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 But by that point, we had planes. We could see what was going on. Right, but that was still true in World War II yeah. as well, right? It, it, it's that there were. Well, I, I guess the, the, the difference mm. in World War II is that there's versus the Korean War. Mm. Is there are so many different theaters, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Um, you had Northern Africa. Um, you had the Western, the Eastern Front. Yeah, there's all this crazy stuff going on. Yeah, there's this really good book that I was uh, that that I have read a few times, and I and I said I was reading it again because I didn't, I'd ever finished it the last time that I read it, but I've read it so many times. Um, it's this one on. Call it pro uh, propaganda and information warfare in the 21st century or something, and it's written by a um, a university scholar. 
and it's all you know one of those things like long footnotes and things like that it doesn't have a fancy title or anything like that and and you know you have to buy it from like you know you know university of chicago yeah. press or whatever right but um just the stories in it are just just fascinating stuff like how um they would have uh, a bunch of fake radio stations during World War II. Oh, I didn't know this either. Right. And so they would have like, um, let me see if I can do this one right, is that they would be broadcasting offshore onto German shores about uh, a fake freedom movement oh, to oh, overthrow oh, oh, okay. Hitler. I do know something about right? This. Yeah. And saying, you know, we we are the we are the German liberator, you know, and they'd have voice actors doing that. Yeah. But it would all, it, but you know, and, and and the boats would have to move because you know, the Germans would have to go out there and try to find these things. But yeah, they they had these long radio plays where like some people would be killed on air and stuff. And it, all, it was super dramatic. Yeah. And it was supposedly like one of the best is that people would be listening to that over Hitler speeches just because the the the, the radio drama was so good. People <laughs> thought it was real. Right. And this, this was after the um, the the uh, uh, the War of the Worlds thing that uh, yeah. is that, that that you know that caused a great stir. Right. And so they were using that te- those techniques and saying like we could capture the fucking you know we could capture the German audiences here, and they'd only listen to us. And yeah, and uh-huh. so so yeah, it, it uh, <laughs> you know and they have stories like that that are just 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 fantastic, you know. Um, it's a really good book. <laughs> so I recommend it. I'll, I'll give you a PDF one right. day. <laughs> Where are we? Mm. I think we're out of time. No. No, we have no. We have twenty minutes. We have twenty minutes. Yeah. Uh, How could that be? Oh, okay. We this, this is forty. Okay, we we. Oh, end I thought we start. I thought we do forty. No, we do. We, we generally do about sixty. Sixty. But but, right. but but we can do. T- we, I mean, you know, we don't have to. Do much more. There's, just, yeah, there's ten more minutes, so we can just end, end it at that point. I hope these microphones are working this time, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We 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 back up again. Yeah. Um. Let, let's see. So so. Uh, <laughs> you can just keep keep on talking about crazy wars. <laughs> right, that's then, always fun. Vietnam. Vietnam. I don't know too much about Vietnam. To be honest with you. Um. Yeah, I really haven't studied much about Vietnam. Um, they, but the uh, the ones that I like much more than Vietnam is the Falkland War. <laughs> oh, that one's beautiful. <laughs> I re- well, I remember that, of course. So, so the Falk. So well, basically, just thought it was a Brooklyn bird. The fucking war. The, the, fucking, the war. fucking war. So, so off of the coast of Argentina, there's a small island about the size of oh, I don't know, maybe maybe uh, Puerto Rico. No, not not even that. I, I would say it's it's about the si- it's about the size of like a, a midwestern city or so, um, and it after World War Two, um, th- or during World War Two, there was an argument made, basically saying that the Germans are basically doing colonialism on the clo- on the colonizers, right? That was the argument, right? Saying like you know this is the same thing that you guys have been doing to, to, to that you guys did to Africa and Asia. It's the same sort of treachery that you did to South America. Like, it's the same junk, right? Um, and now they're just doing it to you. And then they were like, it's, it's right. That's correct. You know, like, like, yes, this is exactly what happened, right? And, and, and uh, you know, like, you can't deny it. And so after World War II, they're like, well, you got to give up all your colonies, you damn hypocrites, right? Um, and so over the next sort of 20 years, you know, you could see th- all the independences. And that's when, like, Africa got all the... That all was the actually the, the deal. Mm-hmm. That was the deal, especially uh, um, when they left the United States holding the bag in Vietnam. They said, well, if we're going to fight this war, you have to get out of every place else that you're colonizing. But, but some, yeah. of those, some of those other things is that, like, the, the South Korea and North Korea, the border was drawn by two British men like after the war when they were trying to decide up like how to split the uh, yeah. Japanese and, and the Chinese influence spheres and they'd never been there. And so they just drew an arbitrary line and said this is where it is. It's crazy, right? Um, uh, but the, 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 whole, the whole point was that like, so they gave up all of the big ones, right? So like, um, 
I don't know. All, all of Africa. Yeah, all of Africa. Like, like you know, there, there used to be like the Belgian Congo. It's not just the Congo, right? <laughs> um, but not all of them. There's still a bunch of small ones that, that were kept on to. And so like, oh, w w there was a big one that we gave up after World War II. It was the Philippines. Oh. Right? And that's one of people, that's one of people forget that we had the Philippines. Like, Guam. It, we, well, Philippines and Guam, we got from Spain as, yeah. as spoilage after the... And we also got Cuba in that time. Yeah. No, no. Did we? no, we never had Cuba. We had some part of, we had some kind of claim to it that we lost. The, uh, we never had all of it. Gitmo. Well, no, Guantanamo we got yeah. from, uh, was that Spanish, Spanish War that we got it? I, I, Spanish American War? I, I, no, yeah, I, I forget the true history, mm -hmm. but I thought that we had some kind of some kind of partial claims to it for a bit, but then it like we never it doesn't really matter um, at, but at, at at the end there's still all these tiny islands and um, like like off the coast of Canada uh, off Nova Scotia, there's still like this tiny tiny island that belongs to France oh it's called um Oh, actually, like, 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 like Martinique or Mar Mar Martinique? Martinique, I think. Martinique, I think it is. Martinique, I think it is yeah. yeah, and they drive on like the other side of the road there, <laughs> and and it's in a part of the European Union. It's crazy, right? And so, like, you know, it's, it's just a tiny little thing right there. Um, and uh, so, in, 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 there's this. So let's go to Falkland, off the coast of. Uh, uh, Argentina. Argentina, thank you. I was supposed to say Afghanistan, but Argentina. <laughs> there's this tiny island, and uh, it doesn't belong to Argentina. It belongs to the British. And around 1982, uh, well, first of all... There's the, nothing on it except sheep. The, it, it's one of those things where, like, the post office, the library, yeah. the, the court, mm -hmm. and the, um, the city hall is one building, and it's, just, and it's one room, right? Like, that's what we're talking yeah. about. And so the Argentinians came up to that one with a tank. Really? But and it was, it was, and it was like, it, I, I don't know how high up it went, but it went up pretty high. And they said, all right, this is ours now. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, the Falklandese or whoever those people are, weren't necessarily against the Argentinians being their government instead of Correct. the British. I think they were with Argentina. Right, I understand. And so it wasn't it wasn't a, a military takeover as much as uh, they came in. No, at but the it was. Invitation. Well, but because that's not how you do it. They they weren't the people of the Falklands weren't against this. I, I, yeah. it, it's it's not about that. It, yeah. it, it's that you're supposed to like you know call up the queen or something and yeah. say hey let, let's go to the table. Yeah. Not not like she's walking up at four a.m. in the morning and saying hey there's like a tank on one of our islands yeah, yeah. and it's like dumped by Argentina out of nowhere right like like and that's basically what it was. It was it was like nobody kind of informed them beforehand yeah. because supposedly it didn't go to the top of Argentina but it went high enough up. And and then when Argentina found out that they're fine, okay, let's take that damn island back. Yeah. But the British responded as if you had bombed like Talfurger Square. They sent a, a, a fleet. Over. They sent everything they yeah. had. Right? And uh, I they they kicked Argentina's butt, but I would probably only say it was because Argentina was like, oh, we're not that serious. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and again, there's nothing on that island except there's nothing sheep. There, right, exactly. There's sheep. Yeah. It's, it's uh, meadows, and they grow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, and, and then it's like, um, when, it's like uh, Reagan's gr uh, Grenada invasion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It, it's, it, the British thought so highly of it. Like, we went down there, and we kicked their butts. Mm. For like this tiny island that the Argentinians didn't truly care about, yeah. like I bet you that you know if, if you like went uh, if you went into Buenos Aires, like you would <laughs> you would get slaughtered, <laughs> like, yeah. like you would not get out of there alive. Um, but you know, <laughs> so yeah, the Falkland the Falkland War is very funny. Um, I, I don't know how many people died. I don't think anybody. I'm sure. No, I don't. Uh, I don't think. Uh... People always people die in these things. Are you kidding? Yeah, I, I'm not sure there were a lot of... No, there wars. were gunfights and everything. Are you kidding? I, I, ships lost. and No, it was a real war. 
It only lasts like three days, but no, no, F- Falkland War was real. He lost in the Falkland War. 500,000. <laughs> The deadliest war in Britain's history. They finally, got, they finally got in there. Were there were uh, internment camps and <laughs> the Argentines are serious you know, business. W camp people were tunneling out. <laughs> uh, so let's see what happens. Um, okay, so it lasts from no second of April to fourteenth of June, nineteen eighty-two. Yeah. So, um, but it, that's I think because it took the the Royal Fleet like three weeks to get there. So declaring war and no, no, but we're, we're, we're gonna, a, a we're gonna, shot. We're, we're going to go over this thing. Two, we're two different. All right, all right. So, so, we're gonna, so on the British side, how many people do you think died? 17. 255. 255, really? On the Argentina side, how many people do you think died? Zero. 650. Wow. I had no idea that many people yeah. died. That's almost oh, yeah. like a real war. Oh, you know, it's a real war. Yeah. It's a real war. How many Argentinians do you think were captured? Well, they captured people? Yeah. 200. 11,300. 11, that sounds like all of them. It's like a city. <laughs> right, and, and the British were only... What did they do with them when they captured them? The yeah. island doesn't hold 11,000 people. I know. The how, entire uh, island is now a prisoner of war. Uh, how many helicopters do you think they lost? The British? Yeah. Oh, well, if, it, if the war's going to be that big, I'm going to go with uh, 100 helicopters. Yeah, 24. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was big, you know, like... Like they, they lost fighters, they lost ships, container ships, destroyers, frigates. It was not, they were serious. And that was when uh, Britain was practically bankrupt. And they decided to fight a war at the cost of probably billions plus lives. Well, uh, well, well, you know, I mean, Maggie Thatcher said there is no society and yeah. that we all have to tighten our belts and that, you know, we can't afford school lunches That's because right. we're fighting the, the stupid Iron wars. Lady. The Iron Lady sent the Royal Fleet out to. <laughs> yeah, it's a, we, we never have enough money to, to you know, but feed, when, feed to people. feed people. But when it comes to building new prisons, yeah, yeah we, we got a huge budget for those. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, enough of this liberal yeah. claptrack. Clap enough war. It was good. It was a fun, fun episode. <laughs> you know, for, for somebody who had never, even though I, whatever, didn't really prepare. Are you wearing one shoe? Zero right now. Oh.